Welcome to the Crazy Town Podcast. I'm Jonas. And I'm TNT Don. I might the explosive one. Let's crack into another one. TNT. Yo. A little bit of a callback today. We talked about this a little, not all that long ago, but yes. there's been some new new news dropping about your boy Diddy. <laughs> so, um... <laughs> My boy, I, you know what? Honestly, Jonas, you, you you put my boy with Trump. You put me with Epstein. You put me with, with a lot a, of people. Smallette. <laughs> this one's kind of this one's kind of like the lowest blow of them all. <laughs> it's enough. not your boy. I'm not. Yeah. No, it's fine. It's fine. I, um, I don't mind. I think it's funny though. So there's been a lawsuit filed. There I'm was. not sure who was the guy that did it. So a lot of. So the guy was Little Rod. He, accusations have come out. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, we'll get into it. A lot of very, accusations come into very it. Very much, very descriptive photos, videos. See, now, whoa. Okay, we might have to get into that part. Let's start off with the basics, though. So uh, Diddy had an album that came out. Ended up being not Grammy nominated last year. Uh, it was the Love album. Okay. Actually, I'm going to tell you right now, excellent album. It was classic Diddy. It, he touched on a lot of his like classic works. Very good album. You could tell the production value was, you know, to a T. You know, something that only Diddy or a, a, an artist of his caliber would, right. would expect. So Lil Rod, mind you, Paul's completely on that name. Okay. Name is Lil Rod. He was a producer. I wouldn't say. What do we call the guys who help make the beats? What do you call those uh, guys? Are those producers? I don't know. Regardless. Okay. All right. I, I look, I don't know the music industry. I just watch a lot of shit on it. All right. So Lil Rod was helping to create this album. Um, through the process, Diddy was very eccentric and expected him to do some making of the band type shit. Oh, right. go down to the Queens and get me some breast milk from a Cambodian. Yeah. 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 Get this track done uh, and don't sleep until it's done. Lil Rod is like, yo, I've been up for 48 hours, but the track got done. He goes, I've heard uh, he goes on. He's actually posted a couple things. He has a GoFundMe because obviously the uh, the lawsuit against Diddy is going to cost a little more money than he has because uh, Diddy's lawyers are top of the line. He's a billionaire. Um, yeah, so he goes on to just discuss like some of the working conditions. He says the money's not right, and uh, yeah, there's a bunch of other accusations that come along with it. Yeah, that so what uh, what I was watching some stuff online about it, mm -hmm. and essentially they're they're equ equating this somewhat to like the Epstein scandal, but for like the rap game, okay, yeah, yeah and yeah. like part of this is because like. It was like Diddy came out of nowhere as like a twenty four year old and created Bad Boy, and he had like he had like a rich guy backer who helped him. I can't remember the guy's name right now, but there's rumors that him this. and Diddy yeah. were intimate with each other. I could see that, and that, and that. Um, so basically, like what they were doing were having like parties, celebrities, yeah. underage girls, homosexual behavior, <sighs> cameras. Like, like homosexual blackmail is involved, like, because like in the rap game, you know, a lot of times it's like, you, you don't want to do come that. off as being homosexual or no, like whatever. No, it was career ending at a, at a point in time. So they would get these guys together, quote unquote, allegedly mm. have them doing things, videotape everything without their consent. And then they basically are like, we got you on tape doing whatever, underage girls, yeah, men, yeah, yeah. yada, yada. Um, wow, so this is, this is very hard. Okay, so the uh, some of the names that were released, I will say, is that uh, there were no actual names in the documentation with uh, with the lawsuit, but there was one that said uh, a Philly rapper that used to date Nicki Minaj. Jonas, I know you don't know a ton of rap stuff, but who do you think that is? Uh. Cool. Philly rapper? Philly rapper used to date Nicki Minaj. I don't know if he used to da date Nicki Minaj, but Will Smith's from Philly. Mm, okay, no, it's not Will Smith. It was Meek Mill. Oh, yeah, that was one of the ones that I'd heard of. Yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah. Yep. So uh, that was Meek Mill. And then the other one was a famous rapper that had recently performed at the Super Bowl. Okay. Oh, Usher. Yeah, Usher. Yeah. So now the thing is, is that... Diddy is a famous person. He has a lot of friends. He has a lot of images with people out there, obviously. Uh, you know, celebrities take pictures. Um, Usher lived with me with, with Diddy. Um, get this shit, man. Usher's parents signed over custody of Usher. 
to when Diddy. he was 10 years old to go to Diddy's Flavor Camp. <laughs> that sounds like a place you don't want your kids to be. All right. So at these at these flavor camps, you will learn how to be a celebrity. And it kind of just like guaranteed you. Uh, well, well, yeah, you're a plant at that point. You're a plant. Yeah. So, yeah. So Usher is a plant. Let's not get it. Let's not get it twisted. If you're willing to sell your kid over to Diddy, I, I wouldn't say sell. Probably sell. Um, <laughs> I wouldn't say sell. Probably sell. Um, Usher, there's been uh, content where Usher did an interview with Howard Stern where he discussed some of the ha- goings on in the house. He's like, yo, so I'm like 10, 13, 14 years old. I saw things that I could not comprehend at that time. And he was like, did any girls ever offer you? He was like, oh, some stuff might have happened. But at the time, I didn't know how to comprehend it. Right, right. <sighs> Diddy has also said is that they used to wrestle f- over uh, cornflakes. <laughs> you know, now, now it could be very innocent, but it does kind of kind of come across like that whole Michael Jackson, like you're buying kids. Well, yeah. And, and the other thing that, that was talked about in this was along yeah. with that was it was um, back around the time, you know, it's been very much alleged that he had something to do with Biggie and Pac's death. Yeah. And like, and there was things about, like oh, they, well, they yeah, started yeah, to get yeah, very yeah. vocal about things that were going on back then and yeah, like yeah, starting yeah. to talk. So like. There, you know, it's all kind of wrapping in with all of his like his rise to power, his 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 path to stay there. Um, yeah. You know, it's, th- it's very interesting to say the least. I think it's very interesting um, that if you really look at the the inform- uh, I'm I'm I, I hate to come across as a conspiracy theorist, man, but I feel like there's a lot being said right now in the media that is uh it's very telling it's very telling of human nature it's very telling of american culture it's very telling of the way that the culture is going because these exposés are becoming more frequent these ex- exposés are becoming more detailed they're becoming more they're just becoming more just all inclusive because of the the internet the ability to gather information is more accessible than it's ever been it's getting ridiculous man nobody is safe and i'm not necessarily saying that diddy was safe by the way the underage girls one of the girls actually made a comment online and she says no i was not underage in in the video that was posted oh gotcha but it doesn't really it doesn't really matter until it goes to trial i mean iceberg effect that's very true. If you're seeing that and people are questioning if she's underage, there's true. probably somebody else that might be in, That's true. in, I don't know, accusations, allegedly. Exactly. And we don't necessarily know that when Usher was t- 10 to 14, 16 years old, what was going on with him and Diddy. I've seen him have a similar relationship with Justin Bieber. Um, yeah, Bieber was one that came up, yeah. Yep, Bieber was uh, also at the Flavor Camp, and he got to spend a lot of time with, with Diddy. And there's, there's video of that, too, where... Then he's like, oh, I got Justin Bieber here. This is your new car. And he's looking at an Ashton Martin. And he's like, you get the house when you turn 18. He's 15 years old in the video. Right, right. There's also another video where Diddy adopted another uh, young white child who was at the age of 14. I guess Diddy has a couple of adopted children. It's a very weird thing. Dude, when you get rich, you lose your mind. I'm convinced when that you're you that your, rich and that powerful, but like you're isolated. You don't understand how normal people think. You get this idea in your head. You have the money to make it become reality, you and no one's going to question it. You make it become reality, and any yeah, your friends are going to tell you it's wrong. And then once it's there, you're like, "Hey, everybody, what do you think about this?" He's and like, "I'm adopting 14 year old white kids," and they're like, "You're insane." He's like, "Where's your camp at?" And you're like, "Where's?" <laughs> It's like, bruh. Neverland Ranch, F- Diddy's Flavor Camp, just saying. Yeah, dude. And I Michael Jackson was innocent. It's it's very Let's interesting. I mean, and more's going to come out as the deposition star and, like, all this stuff. Yeah. It's, it's, it's insane. So, I will just, I will just say is that Little Rod has a, a business arrangement with, with Diddy. And at no point in time does any of this information need to be shared. At no point in time does any of this information need to be released to the public. It doesn't have any bearing on the case whatsoever, but it is released. Obviously, because he just wants to get a check. Yeah. He's like, hey, look, I know more information. This is just a taste. 
Yeah. Oh, I'm sure he knows some things. Well, and and it's, it's very interesting. It's people that are that powerful, like with Epstein and, and Diddy and whoever, it's like no one wants to stand alone against them. Mm-hmm. But like once once they see the cracks in the foundation, they're like, let me bring a sledgehammer too. Like, you know what I mean? Because like if one person's chipping away at your house, ain't nothing going to happen. But if like, oh, all of a sudden there's a crack up the side of the wall and 10 of you jump on and start cracking at that wall, yeah, it becomes a lot more powerful and a lot more able to like happen. That's like true. Weinstein even too. One girl comes out against him, nothing. But when 20 of them come out at once, a lot more powerful to like bring you down. And it's it's just crazy. I mean, and if anyone thinks that celebrities and rich people don't do weird ass shit, I mean, like there was that guy who did that sex cult with that girl from that from Smallville. They were like Brandon girls and shit. Like, bro, weird shit is happening out there with rich people. Like they're just like, oh yeah, let's bring all these girls in and have a sex cult. Let's let's have parties and film everyone secretly and like, dude, insane. Hey, power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely. absolutely. So, all right, dude. Anyways, that's all the time we have for this episode. Go to thecrazytown.com, subscribe for Jonas. TNT. Uh, we out.